So I wanted to just do a short video on how to optimize your day and really based on the daily rhythms of yoga and Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is an ancient healing science. It's over 5,000 years old and it comes from the same ancient texts, the Vedic texts as yoga. So it's considered to be the sister science of yoga. And Ayurveda really recognized this deep connection that we have with nature. And the daily rhythm is really based on syncing up our daily cycles with the cycles of the sun and the moon. Because as much as we can turn on the lights whenever we want and eat all times of the day and get whatever we want, whenever we want, we are still, we're not separate from what is happening outside of us in the environment. So the more that we can actually consciously connect what we're doing every day and how we're eating and how we're sleeping with these natural rhythms that are affecting us, whether we recognize it or not, the more that we're gonna live in more of a state of flow, we're gonna experience more ease and we're gonna have more energy. Not only that, we're gonna be healthier, all of our physical, organs and bodily systems will just function more optimally. So I wanted to, in this video, just share the first habit that I teach about and that I think has the most profound effects. All the habits really do have a huge impact on our lives and how we feel, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But this one is really, just creates a whole momentum for everything working better. So, and then really, you know, there is a big negative impact that we're experiencing as a culture by not being connected to nature and not really recognizing this inherent interconnectivity that we have with the environment around us. And we're seeing this with all these degenerative diseases like heart disease, um, all these lifestyle diseases like autoimmune issues, hormonal imbalances, cancer, um, you name it. Everything that, you know, all these lifestyle, prevent, lifestyle diseases that are mostly preventable are simply a result of how we're living, of our daily habits and how we're, you know, just eating, sleeping, all these bodily functions that are not really working the way they should, as nature intended. And I really noticed from my own life a huge impact in starting to implement these daily habits of yoga and Ayurveda, not only in getting healthier, but also in having more of a sense of purpose and clear direction and more clarity in my day-to-day -day life. And I've experienced so much more energy than I did before, before I was, um, Sustaining myself on coffee all day long, a couple of coffee cups to get me going in the morning, chocolate to keep me going in the afternoon, and wine to wind me down at the end of the day. And that's how I relaxed. And then rewarding myself for enduring a busy day of taking care of kids and fulfilling all my responsibilities um, with vegging out. And so as a result of implementing these habits, I, I eat differently, I respect my body in a way that I never had before, I really make sure that I'm getting the sleep that I need, I'm moving my body, I, I'm fit, I'm strong, I'm healthy, um, and it's really these little lifestyle shifts that over time create huge results. And, you know, these habits, they are simple and they're also pretty obvious and many of you already know what you should be doing but we're not doing it because we're not doing it as a culture and the culture the the status quo of our, our culture and our society and of the people that we hang around is is unhealthy and so if we want to get healthy we really have to put ourselves in the company of those that have the habits that we want to have and that's simply a reality and this has been shown people that have um, unhealthy habits if you hang around those people you're more likely to take on those habits you probably know someone that has an unhealthy habit and when you're hanging out with them you're more likely to partake so 
our community, the company we keep, our peer group is, is hugely important. So when I joined my Ayurvedic community, that's when things really started to change. And being in that conversation of really having these habits at the top of my mind and being reminded of what I need to orient myself towards and to be reminded to deeply honor and respect my body allowed me to make these changes slowly over time. And now just experiencing how much they've affected me and how uh, many positive um, things I've gained from them, I really wanted to share to you and to really tell as many people and inspire as many people as possible to also make these changes. So the, our current status quo is really one of being very busy, overscheduled, overwhelmed, imbalanced, um, rewarding ourselves, really having instant gratification with just the foods that we love and that we like and um, these lifestyles that bring instant pleasure but long-term suffering. And that's really we, what we want to avoid because we don't often think about the long-term effects of our negative habits and what if we continue eating the way that we're eating how that's going to affect us down the road or if we continue to not get the rest and the sleep that we need or if we continue to live with a very stressed out orientation to life or if we don't start to create a meditation practice or a daily exercise practice what is that how is that going to cost us so it's really important to take time out to to look at where we're going, what's the trajectory of our daily habits right now, and is it really creating the kind of body that we want, the kind of health that we want to experience? And not only for ourselves, but for me, the, what was the impetus, the big impetus to change was when I had kids and when I realized how my own experience of my life and how I was feeling affected how I was showing up for them and how I was interacting with them. So if I was stressed out, I was impatient and I was short and I would um, say things that I then regretted. And then I wasn't able to really, I, 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 was, I was really going down to their level as opposed to being more of an adult <laughs> and then just feeling really guilty. And not only that, but I wanted to set the best possible example for my kids so that they would grow up with better habits and with being able to be less reactive and more balanced and steady. So that was, that was one of the reasons why I, I made these changes, but also because I wanted to know like what are the most important things I should be doing for my health? Like what are the how can I keep myself and my family healthy and you know if they do get sick what's the fastest way to get them back on track and so the, that was really why I started to learn Ayurveda and why I seeked uh, out my teacher and why I've stuck with it because I, it just continues to gift me with so much so the first habit that I want to share with you is having an earlier, lighter dinner. And this is not what we're doing as a culture. We're having later, heavier dinners and we're having not much of a lunch. Before I, I really knew about Ayurveda, I was having, you know, little things here and there. I was grabbing something on the go, rushing around when I was teaching yoga. Um, in New York City, when, but when I lived there, I was, I was going from one place to the next, about 18 classes a week, and I would just grab things, and I would never sit down for a, a proper lunch. So having a, a proper lunch that is your main meal, which means it has the most amount of protein, the most amount of fat, and then not eating all the way until dinner, and then when you eat dinner, early. So not past seven, ideally five, six, around that time, and eating a really light dinner. So a light dinner is uh, a soup or maybe some roasted vegetables or a big salad because 
our digestive capacity isn't equipped to digest large amounts of food late at night. And in Ayurveda, it's explained by the Ayurvedic clock. So in Ayurveda, the premise is that everything in nature is comprised of the five elements of earth, water, fire, air, and space. And each of these elements have different qualities, and these qualities are called gunas. And these gunas, which are the qualities of nature, are descriptors. So earth, for example, the qualities of earth are heavy, dense, slow, cold, static. The qualities of water are uh, fluid, liquid, mo mobile. The qualities of fire are sharp, hot. Um, it's also mobile. It, it moves. Um, air also moves. If you think of right now, we're in the season of fall here in uh, Canada, and the, the wind is moving through the leaves, and the leaves become dry, and so dryness and roughness are also qualities of air. And then the last one is space. So space has a, um, a subtle quality. It's expansive. It's clear. It's light. So all these different, this is how we start to understand the language of Ayurveda and how we start to really apply these very basic principles to our lives to create more balance. So these elements, these five elements combine to make the energies of the doshas. So earth and water combine to make the dosha of kapha and kapha is the energy of lubrication and cohesion. And the elements of fire and a little bit of water combine to create the pitta dosha. And pitta is the energy of metabolism and transformation. And then the last one is the vata dosha, which is combined of, is created by air and space element. So these different energies, and you maybe have heard these words before, and they, they are in us, they are in the environment, and they are in the times of the day and then the times of the year. So if you just take the most obvious one of, if we split the day up into three, into thirds, the time between 10 and two, the middle of the day, when the sun is highest in the sky, the sun is the biggest fire element there is. And so that is considered to be the vata, I'm sorry, the pitta time of day. And in the pitta time of day, there is the most ability for metabolism, transformation, and digestion. And this is because our bile production is highest in the middle of the day. So this is when our bodies can actually burn through everything that we eat. We can fully digest it. We have that capacity. And then as the sun starts to go down, as the sun starts to set, our, the bile production reduces, so our digestive ability decreases. So as it gets dark outside, we don't really have that much bile, so we can't process a huge amount of food, and that we're burdening our systems with this heavier dinner. And as a result of that, that food isn't getting fully digested. And what's not fully digested, in Ayurveda, it's, it's considered to be uncooked, and the word for that is ama. And ama is basically toxins. And this can be uh, physical toxins, but it can also be mental toxins. So anything that has been unprocessed or undigested basically sticks, sticks and stays in us. And it adheres to some of the weaker tissues or organs in the body, and that's what makes us sick. Um, it can also just be stored as fat, and this can be one of the main reasons why it can, like, as a culture, people are getting fatter, and obesity is on the rise, and, you know, people are eating these huge dinners, and they're not fully digesting that food, so it's accumulating over time and over time, and it's not going away. So we want to really respect this digestive fire, which is called Agni, which is uh, really our Pitta energy, that, that energy of transformation, because we want to be able to fully digest that food so that we can use it, so it can be transmuted into energy and into nutrients. So 
if you just make one change of having a big lunch and then a lighter dinner, you're not gonna burden your system with this heavy amount of food and then you're asking your body to really digest that which it can't, that which is, you know, it just doesn't have the, the capability. So we're bogging our systems down so we're not able to have the energy we want and we need for everything else that we need to do. And not only that, but because we can't our, our, we're asking our body to try to digest at a time when it can't, it's not going to be able to do things like deeper detoxification, house cleaning, hormone balancing, brain cleaning, all the different things that happen at night when we're not having to digest a big dinner. So first tip, eat lunch as your main meal and have an earlier, lighter dinner.